Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the November 2020 Fellows Community Call. This will be our last community call of the year. Um, it's lovely to see you all. Um, so welcome. Um, just a reminder, um, do please be kind to each other and to yourselves, understanding and flexible. Um, it is the end of the year. We were talking kind of at the beginning how everybody's pretty exhausted um, and just 2020 vibes. So um, yeah, just uh, take care of yourselves and let me know if there's any way that I can support. Um, but we do have a code of conduct for these calls. So if you have any issues, um, oh, it's linked in the, in the notes document. Um, but if you do have any issues, uh, you can report them to myself or Schwabe. This call is being recorded and we'll make the video available on our YouTube channel after the call. So in that case, if uh, you don't want your face on YouTube, uh, please turn off your video, um, but otherwise we, we love to see you. Um, and then just uh, keep yourself muted. We're not speaking to minimize background noise. Um, the notes document that I've shared in the chat and I'll be sharing it again in a second um, is for SSI fellows only because sometimes you share sensitive things in there. Um, so don't share that link publicly, but do please feel free to take any notes, ask any questions, that document is yours, so add anything to it that you want. Um, yeah, so our goals for these community calls are to facilitate community building and encourage collaboration within the, fel within the SSI Fellows community. We want to check in with you um, and make sure that you're doing all right and see how we can support you. Um, and then we want to provide a welcoming and, inc and inclusive space for you to share and explore topics of interest and network with each other. So um, today, uh, depending on um, uh, when people are able to attend, we'll have a fellows update from Malvika. Um, and then the main topic for, for this uh, session is how we can help support um, the active fellows, aka the 2019 and the 2020 fellows to um, uh, basically spend their fellowship funding during the time of COVID um, because people have been facing a lot of challenges in making the most of their fellowship and achieving their goals. So that's going to be the discussion here in the main room. If you don't want to talk about that, um, you can propose a breakout room discussion in the notes and we can um, put you in a separate room. So yeah, so that those are the two just, those are the, what we're gonna discuss today. Um, so we're gonna go over, we're gonna remind you what the SSI can support you with. We're gonna hear more about how fellows have already spent funding during COVID. Um, and then we're gonna open the floor um, for discussion and Q and A um, to answer any of your questions and concerns. Um, and once again, if you have other things that you would like to talk about, feel free to propose them in, in the notes um, and we can put you into separate breakout rooms. Um, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Do we have Malavika yet? I don't think so. Oh, do you not have permission? If you, do you, have you tried refreshing the notes, Sarah? Um, everybody should have edit access in the notes. I can hear my cat yelling at me. Okay, I'm going to then um, carry on. So Malvika is just, I'm just messaging Malvika because she's just joining. So she should be with us shortly. Okay. I guess then um, if we have a moment, uh, did anybody else have any um, separate breakout room topics that they wanted to propose? Or is everybody pretty much here for the, um, how we can support fellows activities um, to go online and various things? Hi, Malvika. Sorry for running late. <laughs> yeah, it's not a problem at all. We actually just got to the part where you could give your talk, but if you want, we can flip it and I can talk for a bit if you would like to wait a little bit to give your presentation. I'm going to switch rooms. Yes, please. Uh, two minutes okay. would be great. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I will go back to screen sharing then. So um, we'll hear from Malvika in a minute. Um, I guess while we're here, um, I'll just remind you. Uh, so in the June 2020 community call, we talked a lot about um, how SSI can support you. So the notes from that are also linked in the document and I've also um, copied and pasted them there. But basically for things like if you need um, a Zoom room, we've got one that you can use. Um, so if, if you need that as a backup for maybe a different room that you have, just let us know. 
um, we can also you can also use your fellowship funds to support things like your own individual Zoom account subscription, um, other software and subscription services, hardware accessories such as headsets, microphones, uh, webcams, uh, storage and compute services, training for online events, um, or just training in general, um, depending on on what you plan to use it for. Uh, prizes for online events, pretty much anything uh, with a receipt that furthers your fellowship aims as, and is in line with the with the university um, finance expenses policies. Um, so basically, uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out and we can we can discuss that with you. But in general, um, these are the types of things that we can um, support. Um, you just go through the usual process of submitting through LOFAT and justifying um, how these items can further your fellowship aims. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, the details are in the notes. Um, and then for people who are pre-2019 fellows, um, you're sort of subject to the same things. If you want to um, dip into the communal pot, uh, just uh, submit a funding request or email me directly and we can have a chat about it. Um, we can also provide uh, consulting on virtual events. Um, and then we have a whole, host, uh, a whole load of blog posts and other resources that um, should be linked in the document. Um, we'll come back to this if you have any questions, but for now, I would like to go back and hand over to Malvika to give her fellows update, if that's all right. Yes, perfectly fine. Thanks, Shoei, for nudging me because I definitely got too engrossed in making my slides. I'm uh, going to share my screen. Okay, um, I'm very excited to give my updates because I think I have definitely benefited a lot with uh, my SSI fellowship. So first of all, I'm part of 2019 fellow group with these wonderful group of people. And I really, really am proud of the fact that I'm part of the cohort that has about 80% women. Uh, that's, that just still blows my mind. So that's amazing. And Rachel is uh, my co-fellow. Um, what I want to show in terms of my update is basically thinking back on why I think my fellowship has been successful and how I can help you spend some money. So first of all, life happened and the plan that I had proposed for my fellowship did not really fully pan out. The reason was that I uh, applied for fellowship when I was uh, deep into my bioinformatics research and I wanted to uh, have um, some sort of bioinformatics training platform. Um, but then I changed my field. I went into data science, abandoned bioinformatics. But what was really good that I had aligned my fellowship with the focus in terms of my role as a community manager and what I wanted to continue doing in uh, the next five years. And those three ideas were that I wanted to develop open source central learning resource for peer-to-peer -peer learning. So develop something that can enable people to just build sort of a network that they can learn from each other. I wanted to reduce learners' dependencies on training activities that are organized centrally by advanced researcher because in my field, that was a huge problem. And the third was how can I enable smaller life science communities to grow, engage, and sustain in the long term? So even though these ideas were first built for bioinformatics when I was switching my job and career completely, these three stayed because this was something that I feel personally quite aligned with and passionate about. So coming back to what we all have from SSI as fellows, uh, we get allocated a small funding of 3000 pounds. And we also have this collaborative element, which is an access to the network of brilliant fellows uh, we can invite and collaborate with them on different projects and we can uh, basically highlight our side hustle uh, proudly because uh, when you can tell your supervisor, well, I'm you know, working on my SSI fellowship project, this could be anything that SSI is supporting you with. And as long as they're happy with it, you're, you're basically doing work which is aligned with your job. And finally, the opportunity for self-promotion. I think the the job that I have now, I'll quickly talk about that in a bit, but I feel like if I did not have SSI fellowship, I would have less um, eligibility because I used to work in Germany 
And my only connection with the UK was SSI Fellowship and Network and my current job uh, definitely uh, thought that that was valuable for them. So and also I have to tell SSI folks that you are doing a brilliant job in advertising because my partner wears that t-shirt and advertises me literally every second week. So great job on that. Um, so this is how my account looks like right now. I have been very successful at spending that money and I'm gonna tell you how to do that for you. But I have to say that this is not a lot of money. Um, and I don't think a lot of you come into the program for money, but this is enough money that requires you to plan and take actions. Because if you don't plan ahead, uh, you wouldn't really know where to use them. And my uh, actual use of this money is how I have combined them with the collaborative element and amplify the impact that I've had with these. So I'm gonna show you actually where I have spent that money. To first start with, um, make use of what we as fellows have. Uh, so I, we, I had the fellow inaugural meeting and uh, we also get invited into collaboration workshop. And uh, I think even in the COVID world, the collaboration work workshop is designed in a way that we all get involved we have chance to talk to each other and work collaboratively with other fellows. And I think this is extremely valuable. Um, so though this did not require a lot of money, uh, it did have huge impact in how I got to know other fellows and how I later on built relationship with them. So make use of that. Um, second is the project that I have used a lot of my funding is Open Life Science. Um, so I work on Open Life Science with Yo, who's another fellow um, of uh, SSI. And we worked on this project for very long for free. We don't uh, have huge amount of money. So Open Life Science is a training and mentoring program, which we run for 16 weeks where people come in with their own project and they build their own project with the help of training and mentorship support. So this is a 16 weeks commitment, which means we require people, we as a project in Open Life Science require Zoom account, uh, or we require application platform, we require some small fundings here and there uh, to pay for some subscription, which if we didn't have access to SSI, we will be paying from our own pocket. Um, other thing that also has helped in Open Life Science is that we, we have a huge, uh, cohort of mentors and all these, not all these mentors, a lot of mentors actually come from SSI. So for example, Andrew, uh, Patricia, Rachel is an expert there. And we have you uh, again, and all these people have been instrumental to the program. Um, first of all, because they bring their personal passion and experience into the program, but also we had run the mentoring skill uh, which is a very expensive uh, training, which is a professional training offered by external consultancy and none of us can individually pay for it. Uh, and in this case, Andrew, for example, stepped in and he, uh, he spent a part of his SSI fellowship to support this program. So again, coming back to that, this is not a lot of money, but if you're combining uh, your power together with other fellows and building a project together, you can actually see that there is an amplified access. And at the same time, you who has actually has finished her fellowship, she can still all go back to SSI and write in proposal in terms of uh, community related work that she's doing. So we are really, really grateful in Open Life Science that SSI has been such a supporter, not just that, that uh, Neil from SSI wrote us a recommendation for one of the grants that we were writing, and we have now uh, one of the grants which gave us 20,000 euros. So just imagine how paying for 500 pounds of you know easy chair and Zoom has helped us to actually grow to that position where we can ask for more money. So. This, this wouldn't have happened if we did not go proactively uh, collaborating with people like Andrew and Patricia and Rachel. I think this is really a combined uh, power in my opinion. So don't think that as fellow, you need to work alone or you need to spend that money alone. Especially in the time of COVID, this money should be invested in people and that people could be you, your skill building, but also other people. So for example, Ally Skill uh, is a workshop that I truly care about. This is about stepping up for your colleagues to create a, an environment 
where they feel safe and respected. And I wanted to become a trainer, but I also wanted to make sure that I am not the only person who has the responsibility to teach. So I sponsored training of you through my fellowship. And now we both are gonna run a life skill workshop uh, in December. The registration is open if you're interested. So I think uh, there is so much that I, I, when I was looking at this, I'm like, yeah, you know, this is just not four or five events that happened. This really has changed the way that I work with people. And of course, again, emphasizing on that money may not be a lot, but these people who I get to work with, I wouldn't have had access to if SSI wasn't there. So I think definitely requires us to go and reach out to these people individually. And I think Slack is brilliant because for example, uh, I can just drop in a message to Rachel asking for something. I can drop a message to Giacomo or Shoeb could remind me, hey, you're running late to a call. It really does help. And I think these things are very important to stay connected. Other thing that, um, again, I want to bring back that, um, so this this inspiration seminar by Christy Whitaker, I was in Emble when I had applied for the fellowship. And I, when I was transitioning, I was quite inspired by Kirsty, and I wanted to bring her to my organization and give a talk. And these kind of talks uh, need some funding because of course you need to fly in someone and uh, you put some money in for accommodation and so on. And it was really useful to have SSI support on that. Um, and at the end, uh, of course, this, this cannot happen because of COVID. Um, but for example, this is an option when you are uh, interested in organizing something in your current workplace and you don't have access to funding, SSI funding can help. So I wanted to just have four points and also see what you all think about it. Uh, how can we use SSI fellowship in COVID time? Not in travel, of course, but investing in people, the people that you work in. It, it doesn't have to be you who has to build all the skill, probably one of your colleagues who wants to build a skill and contribute to your project and you invest in them. Uh, there's an option to sponsor that kind of um, um, funding, for example. Other is planning ahead. Uh, if we don't plan, the one year goes by again. And I have to say, I have to thank you for that because the first time I got the fellowship, she, said, she told me, start thinking about it because if you don't, you, you would end up not spending any money. And then reaching out to SSI, especially when you don't know, when you're unsure, when you probably need more money than what you have, uh, ask them and they'll tell you if there's a possibility for that. I think I've spoken a lot longer than a sign time, but um, very curious to hear how we, you all uh, plan your SSI fellowship. Awesome, thank you so much, Malvika. Virtual round of applause. Um, no, that's that's super useful. So, um, and you're our only speaker today. So we're very glad that you could come in and share your insights. Um, does anybody have any questions for Malvika? Hi, Malvika. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, did your plans change at all in relation to the um, in relation to it? Did you have to switch course due to that as well as your career change? So, I think uh, Rachel and I had the meeting when I was switching my job. Uh, when Rachel actually reached out to me and said, "Do you want to revise your uh, profile?" Um, and I think. It happened because I think Rachel and I work in an area where we kind of see each other, but it could happen that some of you are not in that area so that, that you can update your profile and I don't want to step on it and Rachel you can correct me, but you can also change your, your project your project idea will change. And I think uh, SSI is investing in your personal ability to do something rather than the project that you're trying to build. Yeah, that's correct. Um, I think you're probably talking about the the midterm reviews that we had for 2019 fellows. And if the 2020 fellows were on a normal schedule, you would have had midterm reviews by now, I think. Um, and maybe that's something I should actually plan for the start of next year, just so that um, we can meet one to one for half an hour and just go through what your original plans were and then how we can adapt them to 
to support any new situations. Um, because yes, you can change them. And I think everything has changed this year. Um, and so we are here to, to support you and help you adapt and help you achieve um, your goals, even if they change. Um, so does anybody have any further questions for Malvika about her presentation or anything else? Um, in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow on directly um, from what Malvika was saying um, and basically talk about the other ways that um, fellows have spent their funds um, this year so far. Um, so we've had some fellows attend virtual conferences, or at least I've had funding requests and expense claims for virtual conferences. Um, so for example, I attended a reproducibility, replicability, and trust in science conference. Um, Sarah attended EuroPython. Uh, I think Philip attended a international statistical ecology conference. Um, so if you see an online conference that does cost money, uh, you can use your fellowship funds for that. I actually do want to reiterate that um, things like collaborations workshop um, do, do not come out of your 3000 pound pot that comes out of a separate pot for you. So don't worry um, about any of that. Um, you can also, uh, some fellows have also participated in online workshops and training courses. So like Malvika said, she attended an Ally Skills Train the Trainer course. Um, I'm currently attending a Community Engagement Fundamentals course with the Center for Scientific Collaboration and Community Engagement. And then I have also purchased a ticket to attend um, Malvika and Yo's upcoming Ally Skills workshop. So I've added the details for that um, in the notes as well in case you're interested in registering for something like that. Um, we've had a fellow um, commission some branding for their online community and events. Um, and there's a blog post linked to that in the notes about how they went about uh, that process. Um, we've had fellows who have organized and facilitated online workshops or training courses. And th that's pretty much what, what Malvika talked about. Um, they organized the mentorship skills training workshop, um, as well as uh, the ally skills workshop coming up. Um, and then we've had fellows uh, use funds for infrastructure costs for running online events. So for example, I've um, I have a meetup subscription for my community that I run. Um, and then uh, the Zoom subscription that Malvika talked about, uh, as well as the platform uh, for um, their applications. I think she's mentioned EasyShare and then also live captioning and transcription for online meetings, um, such as using Otter AI. So those are some of the examples um, where funding um, has been spent. And I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now and just open the Floor. I guess before um, I answer any direct questions to this, was there anybody else like uh, who wanted to discuss something other than this topic and wants to go in a separate breakout room? Everybody good? Very much appreciated. All right. Um, so now I'm going to open the floor and address anybody's concerns or questions or if there was anything that they wanted to discuss about their fellowship plans or moving events online or spending funds. or if anybody has further advice. Oh, go ahead, Sarah. Yeah, sorry. Um, so my, um, I've been one of the few lucky ones actually that um, my plans didn't change in spite of COVID because the conference has just moved online. And if anything, it saved me more money and the very gracious extension to the deadline probably means I get to do all of those conferences again next year. Um, but another, the other half of it was, um, a workshop that I plan to run in combination with yourselves and the Turing Way as well. Um, so I guess talking a little bit about um, moving these kinds of events online, and I know that you have great resources from Collaborations Workshop as well, but um, maybe just a bit of a discussion around that would be interesting. I don't know if anybody else is interested in that. Yeah, so things that we could support um, in that instance is um, things like if you wanted to use a platform other than Zoom. So there are lots of other 
really cool um, conferencing platforms out there. Um, if you find something that suits the goal of the workshop that you want to run, uh, that's a way that you could enhance your your program. Um, does anybody else want to chip in with anything? Um, could I like buy Azure credits? So for example, I would either run a put your lesson on on my binder workshop or deploy your own binder hub workshop. And the second would um, require everybody attending to have like an Azure account with some credit. So would that be a? I think so, yeah. So I'm in the conversation we had with Neil and Giacomo earlier this year, I think storage and compute services did count. So that should be fine. Schwabe can contradict me if I'm wrong, but. I, I think that's that would be fine. I think in terms yeah. of the payment, it would be if we had like, you know, if you told the attendees that 15 of them or 10 of them that yes, you can claim by SSI, that's like 15 claims, which might be hard to process. So it might be easier if you, if there was some way of you claiming for them and then claiming that back and then handing that out, if that was possible. Yeah, it used to be that um, Tanya would hand out um, Azure subscriptions for me. Um, although I don't think she's going to be um, in a position to next year, um, but it might be that I could find someone else, another connection at Microsoft via the Turing who could smooth that process. Yeah. But so, that's definitely something that should be supported. Yeah. I mean, other... this is a... oh, sorry. Okay. I was going to ask an off topic question. So I think. Um, after you, Shwe. I was just going to say, are there people on the call who have got plans who are thinking, well, the only thing I can do is the, I'm going to wait and just do this when it's okay to do it face to face because I want to do it face to face. Um, and you don't want to really envisage doing anything online, um, which is okay, but it's it's good to know what people are are thinking in that sense. Um, what is is there a, any feeling amongst people that will wait and see um yeah so i i think not, not necessarily because i'd prefer to do things in real life but um like my feeling for for most of the time since february has been that i'm just extremely against the wall with catching up with like real work in a sense and and that kind of we as an organization have been completely thrown by the lockdown and like loss of our field work and whatever um that like i'm only now completing projects that were due six months ago and so kind of everything has fallen by the wayside and so i mm. i would i wouldn't mind doing things online but i've just simply not had any uh time to to not firefight for much of this year uh, and so that would necessitate waiting um that's good to know. That's good to know that there are, there's a set of there are people who are waiting, uh, and uh, you know, until it things clear up, and then they'll use their phones. Thanks for sharing that, Philip. That sounds very similar to my year. So solidarity, at least it's not much, but yeah. Yeah, I just want to reiterate that um, a lot of a lot of people do feel the same. And I know that um, even with these calls, sometimes I struggle with it because I'm just like, do I want to offer another Zoom call or people burnt out, which is try why I try to keep them as informal as possible, because I don't want it to be too structured um, and too much of a burden. But we also want to offer a space where you can come and get support for these sort of things. So um, yeah, completely understand that. And um, sorry, sorry that everybody feels like they have to firefight 24 seven. Hopefully um, things will get better soon. But yeah, we just wanna emphasize that we don't want this fellowship to be an added pressure. Um, like we'll extend if we need to extend um, and we're here to help you um, achieve your goals. Um, Emily, did, uh, did, was that sort of already what you were going to ask before? Did you have another yeah. question? That was kind of 
leading on to my point, I guess it was uh, directed to you, you and Malika, because you guys have experienced building community. How do you go about looking for, I guess, mentors for your application, uh, for your platform or like collaborators who will work with you? Because I recently joined a new institution and I had an idea for a group and then I got kind of too much interest and then I felt a bit overwhelmed and I was like, I think I'd feel a lot better if I had somebody else in it with me and I'd feel like a lot more capable. Um, yeah, I nearly accidentally founded a society and had to be like, oh no, I have real work to do as well. So I, how do you go about finding um, like collaborators or like similarly minded people? I honestly do not like working alone uh, on anything. And ever since I've known that there are other people who are better at stuff than uh, me, I kind of trust them a lot. And I have to say, asking for help is very difficult, but that's the only thing that works. And uh, write, writing private emails are better than uh, open invitation on Slack uh, because you can target people and talk to them more individually. I um, I did not take name of Jez and Sarah, both are mentors as well in the OLS. And and I think, um, I, think I, I would definitely say, well, this is something I wanted to ask Rachel about. And I think Emily, you're right that maybe we've done it so many times that we forget how hard it was the first time around um, and how we can actually support these kind of activities for other fellows it's a I don't know Rachel if you've thought about it if we can uh, for example let me give an example if you want to organize something and you feel that you're very alone in organizing this and you can use some help how will you reach out to the fellows I wonder if there is any plan around that yeah so um that's a huge motivation for these calls and for the newsletter. Um, so I hope that they are good opportunities for you to kind of call out for collaboration. Um, so with the like the fellows updates um, or spotlights, I think they're a good opportunity to kind of pitch what you want to do and you can either get feedback in the call or you can pick some interest. So um, just to give an example, a few months ago when uh, Sorrel uh, gave her fellows update about um, I think it's actually also about like coaching and um, project management within software. Um, she actually had some fellows follow up with her afterwards about um, collaborating on the project. And I don't know if um, Jez has any experience getting uh, gaining collaborations after he pitched um, last time, um, but hopefully it's, it's a good way to kind of promote to other fellows. Um, also, if you want to arrange a, a meeting or a call with me on, like an individual basis, I'm happy to kind of talk things out with you. And then since I have an overview of the fellows and Shweb as well, like we can kind of help you identify people who would really suit kind of that particular project that, that you're looking for help on. So um, does that answer the question? Yeah, that's <laughs> perfect. waffling at this point. Thank you. <laughs> hey, that's perfect. And there's, you know, the the staff at SSI, they're quite connected to different networks, as well as the fellows are connected to different networks. So sometimes we can, you know, reach out to other people who might not be fellows, but who might be interested to both be not active and not in that area. Perfect, thanks. Can I add something about the mentor? Um, I actually think that reaching out to someone if you want them to be mentor and telling them that you want them to be mentor within the SSI fellowship that you have is a lot more structured and easy to do. Um, I and, and again, like I don't think I'm officially, I can speak for SSI, but there are few of us who are a lot more active and uh, we, we can promote a lot more for example, if you can tag us in your post uh, for can you RT this or can you repost this somewhere? And I'm really happy to do that across different networks. Yeah, we're all very happy to amplify um, everyone's activities. So we love to brag about you. So please send us anything that you're doing, even if it's not necessarily part of your fellowship plan. If you've won an award, I try, I try to keep up with y'all on, on social media as best I can, but sometimes stuff falls through the cracks. So please don't hesitate to let me know if you want us to shout about anything because 
you're all doing really cool stuff and you're really amazing so we want to we want to amplify what you're doing and your achievements and also your calls for collaboration um one of the fellows uh pablo he um we did a, a news item for him on the on the ssi website doing a, a call for collaboration on some of the workshops that he was organizing for carpentry con so these are all things that we can do um to help amplify and, and get you the collaboration that you need yeah um, one thing from the kind of earlier days of the fellowship was an interesting conversation on the Slack where somebody asked a question and one of the replies was were, was like, well, normally I wouldn't answer that question, but as you're a fellow, I will. You know, there's a lot of camaraderie amongst the fellowship that sometimes, um, and everyone's quite polite, so maybe you'd be too polite to ask, but you'd be, uh, you'd be um, surprised how much kind of latent, latent, maybe concern there is for each other. So it's, you know, it's uh it's, it's useful to to ask i mean we do, the fellow slack for example is not particularly high traffic but when questions are asked things don't tend to get ignored you tend to get some kind of response and discussion just which you muted <laughs> no go ahead jess just just add to what marvie can we check if if you've got a, a specific a very specific ask like you want some people to be mentors and you know some people who you think would be good mentors, um, it's worth contacting them and telling you that you think they would be good mentors. Um, because I kind of rather shyly said, I would like to be involved with OLS somehow, but I'm not sure what I could do. Um, and find myself as a mentor because Malvika and Yo convinced me that I had something to offer that maybe I didn't realize I did. Um, so yeah, but actually reaching out to someone and saying, I'm looking for mentors for this, I think you would be good. Um, you know, stroking their ego a bit can help. Okay, I'll butter them up. From, from the perspective of someone who has become a mentor in the OLS program. I mean, we, one thing, I mean, maybe it's slightly off topic, so it can tell me if it is or not, but one thing is that we are about reformulating the Fellows 2021 programme, um, and there'll be some things going out. Is there, um, is there any changes in terms of things that we should support, that we should be brought explicit about that you thought oh that you know now that wasn't so obvious back when you applied that you think we should highlight i i still find it very hard to uh, browse through blogs if i don't know the author's name um, and, and I think there are a lot of interesting blogs I would read and I would not use it until like seven months later. I'm like, oh, I read something. I want to go back to it. And it's really difficult to find them. And if there can be some ways to have like structured searching, I would really enjoy that. <laughs> oh, okay. I agree. There is, um, there is a search bar on the website and it usually gets me where I need to go. But I, I think what I found I would like is for like the tags or categories to be visible somewhere. Um, and this is something I keep meaning to bring up, but forget. Um, and yeah. On that topic, this has nothing to do with the 2021 program, but while we're talking about the blog, um, it would be really helpful if the full text of all the articles was included in the RSS feed. Oh gosh, these are all things I know nothing about. Okay. <laughs> that's something... Hi, sorry, I've just been creeping in the background. <laughs> um, that's something that I've actually raised, so hopefully that will be getting added at some point soon. Fantastic, Jacqueline. Thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. It's actually less of an issue now when I'm like permanently bathed in Wi-Fi. Um, but in the before times, it was quite frustrating to have to be kind of on a train or something going through my uh, articles I downloaded and find out that all I downloaded was a sentence and a half. 
So we have about 10 minutes left um, and we can end early if that happens, but I just wanted to make sure, um, if, did anybody have any other questions, concerns, calls for collaboration or anything? Can be related to anything, can be related to spending your funding, it could be related to anything at all. Um, while you're thinking, my question for you is, do you find these community calls useful? Do you like them? Would you like them to continue into the new year? You obviously don't have to come to all of them, but we're happy to offer them if, if they're something that you find useful. Definitely useful. Uh, I think I, oh, sorry, after you. No, you, you finish your thought, I interrupted. Uh, uh, quickly then, yeah, I really um, find them useful because I kind of um, maybe dropped off the face of the earth for a bit and they're a nice way of kind of coming back into the community, uh, seeing people's faces again. So yes, from me. Yeah, I was just going to say that it's like really nice to just keep in touch with the community, even if we have a, like a session that's been today where it's been a bit smaller, a bit slower, a bit like, yeah, it's the end of the year kind of vibe. Like this is still been a nice way to end the day. Yeah, awesome. So, Any other? oh, go ahead, Shred. I know, uh, I don't know if this is appropriate and, and, and you can tell me if you don't want to, but I know you've been working on some of the COVID response things. So I was just, I was really fascinated to, uh, don't know if I'm going to get an opportunity to ask you if you wanted to say anything about what you've been doing in the last. Um, yeah, sure. Um, what uh, did, was there anything specific that um, you were thinking about? Um, was there anything just generally what you've been doing? I know you were trying to I know your project, your project plans were around synthetic data, whether any of the work that you've been doing um, has then fed into some of your ideas possibly for the future as things hopefully get calmer. Yeah, yeah sure. So, um, I mean, I, I definitely uh, resonate with what uh, Philip and Emily have been saying um, that, because I mean, right at the peak, which feels like a long time ago now, or well, the first peak, I should say, uh, I was clinically redeployed. So my, my, my life kind of, kind of just everything got put on pause for a bit. Um, and then I've come back to my research and I'm in enormous catch up mode because I didn't do any research for three months. Um, but then um, we tried to, I've been working with um, uh, Kirsty Whitaker and a few people to try and uh, try and develop um, data assets that, um, you know, can help fuel uh, research in, um, in coronavirus. Um, and I mean, in, the one thing that has come up several times is accessibility to <laughs> uh, accessibility to to data that you can play with um, that isn't subject to all of the privacy concerns of real clinical data. Um, so actually, my my fellowship has <laughs> reared its head regularly through this process because that um, just to remind people, my my um, uh, fellowship pitch was about trying to create synthetic data. Uh, to support research goals where you know privacy constraints make sharing data very very challenging um so um so that i mean that, that data resource is is kind of now functional and analysts uh, now have hands on on it in fact data was sent like this morning to some of the analysts which has been really exciting um so that's been a, a um a uh, um quite a different piece of work and quite interesting um but the um I'm kind of trying to come back to this stuff now because I think the 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 this, the case has been made quite concretely to some people who are involved in that project, um, which would allow kind of my fellowship to take to move forward a little bit in the new year, basically, because uh, I think um, there's now uh, a lot of a lot. Of, this has catalyzed a lot of people seeing the need for synthetic data to support these things. So hopefully, uh, it means that my fellowship can kind of kick off in a new year and I can get things back on track. Does that, did that answer your question or did you want to know that's, more? That, <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. I know I know Gary's put his hand up. I know Gary's doing some work in this area. So it'd be interesting to 
hear what he has to say. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, that, that's really interesting. So for context, I'm working on um, the ISRIC 4C project. Um, oh, right, yeah. Um, so we have um, a lot of data um, in Edinburgh and a lot of people wanting to get access to that data. Um, most of which is we, we sort of struggle with maintaining um, what's supposed to be a free and open access policy um, with the fact that we also have to balance that against the fact that we can't just give the data out um, and, and the fact that we're also all very, very busy. So bits of the process are constantly breaking, which is um, not ideal. Um, we're just about at a point where we've got a safe haven set up, which is good from the perspective of, I think, of giving people access to the data, but I'd really be interested in uh, learning more about the sort of the synthetic data side and, and, and could we sort of run our data sets through your processes to generate data sets that other people could use as well as, you know, just generally sort of interested in what you're doing. This ties into what I'll be doing in the new year as well, actually, because um, I've got a new job to establish what's called a, a sort of a basically data cooperative in Liverpool city region. Um, and we're sort of quite interested in how we produce synthetic data as a potential model for enabling small businesses, for example, to be able to sort of know what types of data are out there, what they can sort of do with it, and that kind of thing as well, as well as researchers to, to, to sort of enable um, um, people to be able to use this data, but without, like you say, get, getting access to the actual data, which is clearly quite um, private and sensitive. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that sounds fantastic. That sounds like there's an enormous overlapping of the Venn diagram there, doesn't it? Um, yeah. So, yes, I shall, I, um, I shall drop you an email if that's okay then. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, I think my, I haven't bothered to put my email in the thing yet. I'll do that now. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. That's, see, it is useful. And uh, I'm, 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 a, I'm, an old, I'm an old fellow. I'm from like 2017. <laughs> I'm here, kind of here going, it's, it's all good. I didn't have to deal with COVID. It was great. <laughs> I think I went to Tel Aviv, it was fantastic. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll just drop my uh, email and uh, no. thanks. Awesome. This is what we love to see. All right, so I'm aware of the time. Um, if you do have any specific questions or any questions at all, please don't hesitate to drop me a line. Um, I'll just do some quick shout outs before we end. Um, so, Collaborations Workshop 2021, um, registration is now opened. Hopefully everybody has received emails. Um, 2019 and 2020 fellows, we will cover your registration. So hopefully you've received a code from me um, to register for your ticket for free. Um, and then if you're pre-2019, um, if you need assistance uh, paying for registration, um, just submit a funding request via LOFAT or get in touch with me if that's easier. Um, and then, yep, and then Malvika has got an Ally Skills training workshop. Um, she's got two different times um, and they're both, is it next week, Malvika? I think next Friday. Yeah, it's, on, it's next Friday, one in the morning uh, and another in the evening. They are both three hours long and uh, registration through Eventbrite. I've got that linked in the notes as well. And then there are a few other things um, in case people need more things to do. Um, but these are all very, very exciting things. So um, it was lovely to see you all. Um, hopefully this uh, provided some inspiration for how you can use your fellowship to, to achieve your goals, but um, we're here to support you. Please don't be super stressed um, about the fellowship because there's enough to stress about as it is. So um, if there isn't anything else, uh, uh, have a great um, end of the year and see you in the new year, unless you need to get in touch about anything. Thank you. Okay. Bye. See you.